Hi, my name is Alex Norton, and I'm going to be sharing some highlights of the continued growth of HPDA and AI and HPC. To start, let's look at some definitions. Um, when we talk about forecasts and the way that we break out the AI market, um, these are the, the definitions we use to segment it. Uh, these definitions are drawn from talking to many, many end users to understand what are the key differences uh, and what are the similarities between these different methodologies. AI is the umbrella term. Uh, it's a broad term, just basically meaning the, th the ability for computers to do things that human thinking does. Um, underneath that is machine learning, and within machine learning is also deep learning, and then there's other AI. Uh, for machine learning and deep learning, the key is how much human input there is. Uh, machine learning is more of a supervised learning situation, whereas deep learning it can be thought of as unsupervised learning. Um, and then other AI, these are AI methodologies that are growing in importance, but are not yet major parts of the AI ecosystem from a, from a revenue or a market share perspective. Uh, right now, the main methodology or the growing methodology in this space is graph analysis. In looking at the forecast, as I mentioned, we, we break out the, the AI forecast in a few ways. Um, I'm gonna work at the top and, and build down. So the top row is our standard HPC server revenue forecast. This includes all on-prem server uh, purchases in the year. The line below that, the HPDA, that includes all the big data servers and all the AI servers. So row two is a subset of row one. And then the HPC-based AI row three, that's a subset of row two. So that's those servers or systems that are dedicated at least 50% of the time to either machine learning, deep learning, or other AI methodologies and not HPDA or big data applications. As you can see, HPC-based AI is growing at a much higher rate or faster rate than the total or overall HPC server market. In the bottom, we take the HPC-based AI market and we split it out between machine learning, deep learning, and then other AI methodologies. Uh, today, machine learning makes up a bulk of the overall AI server market. And when we say ML, what we're talking about is systems that spend a, are dedicated at least 50% of the time to machine learning applications or supervised learning applications. However, deep learning, which right now is a smaller portion of the market, is growing at a significantly higher rate. Uh, some of the issues around deep learning, including transparency and explainability, have slowed the growth of deep learning servers in the past, um, but as these have become important problems to solve, we do expect deep learning based systems to have a much higher growth rate uh, over the next four years. Um, what we wanted to show here is how AI servers factor in. Um, so we just showed the, the numerical representation, but we wanted to also show a visual representation for how AI plays a part in the broader server market. So on the left um, is a split pie. On the left-hand part of the split pie, you see it's about a two-third, one-third split between servers dedicated to traditional mod sim and servers dedicated to either big data or AI applications. And on the right, the, the purple segment is machine learning, um, but the right shows how the big data and AI part of the market breaks out. Um, one important note here is that this chart represents, and the numbers on the previous slide, represent systems that are dedicated to AI applications. So whether it's machine learning, deep learning, other AI, or big data applications. This does not represent all of the AI work or applications being run in the HPC space, just systems dedicated to those applications. There are plenty of traditional HPC sites that run a majority of their applications that are mod sim that are also starting to run some AI, um, but those systems are not purchased specifically for AI. On the right of this slide, what you see is the, the forecast for the data intensive dedicated HPC servers. So this includes the big data, machine learning, deep learning, and other AI. And as you can see, it's growing uh, rather rapidly the access on the left is in billions of dollars.
um, one of the trends that we're tracking in this space is how AI is impacting future system design. Uh, so we, in a study we ran, a similar study uh, that we ran in, in 2020, we just ran another one recently. We don't have the data yet for that public, but um, we talked to almost 200 HPC sites and we wanted to understand how AI was factoring into where they run their workloads. Um, so today or about a year ago, 68% uh, of the people ran all of their workloads on the same system, including AI and ModSim, and about 20.6% or just under 21% ran their AI applications in a different system. As those users were asked to think about the next six to 18 months, um, there was a slight shift towards more users getting or deploying dedicated AI systems, uh, about a quarter now, up from a fifth, who are running on separate systems. But there's two key takeaways here. Uh, one is that for a bulk of HPC users, the need for a heterogeneous system is growing, uh, as many of them are incorporating AI, increasing their AI usage, and they need to run the, and they're running those AI applications on the same system as they run their traditional mod sim applications. So the need for heterogeneity in future HPC systems is growing. The other key takeaway here is that there are a number of users, 26% to be precise, who anticipate running their AI applications on a separate system or appliance, um, which is growing as well. And as we'll talk about later in this uh, presentation, the cloud is also factoring in here quite significantly. Uh, another area that we're tracking and have been tracking for the last few years is the variety of AI-specific hardware that's coming out. Um, AI workloads are increasingly diverse, new methodologies, new application spaces. And although GPUs are currently the market leaders for accelerators in, in AI systems and for AI workloads, they're not necessarily the only option moving forward. Uh, both startups and large vendors are building custom processors, new processor and accelerator technologies to handle specific classes of AI applications, whether it's natural language processing or image recognition. Um, there's these variety of processors are starting to find their niche in the market. They're starting to find specific types of users specific use cases, and they're going after them. Um, there is a lot of optimism. There's an abundance of funding for many of these options. And there's a lot of excitement around what this variety of hardware can provide in the future of the, the AI ecosystem. As I mentioned, the cloud also plays a big factor in the AI growth. Um, based on data collected in late 2019, early 2020, as cited in an earlier slide as well, um, users anticipate running about one fifth of their HPC enabled AI workloads in the public clouds. And this growth is expected to continue over the next few years. Um, some of the key reasons that users are looking to the cloud for AI is, is one, the access to many of new and diverse hardware and software solutions. As I mentioned on the last slide, there's a number of new processor and accelerator technologies uh, coming into the market, and the cloud is one of the places where um, those users are looking to to get access before they can buy it on-prem. Uh, a second driver is the access to public data sets or the ability to aggregate data from sensors or from different parts of the web on the cloud for storage. Um, there are many situations where it can be more cost-effective to run your training model where the data already exists rather than moving the data in or out of a cloud platform. And then finally, HPC users are looking to leverage the expertise of cloud providers, especially in the AI space, um, and take advantage of the knowledge and, and the work that many of these CSPs have done in the AI space to further their own, as a user, their own AI capabilities. There are some concerns and issues right now uh, around AI. A couple key concerns uh, center around the transparency and explainability of trained models. So being able to understand the process by which a model came to a decision, what was the decision tree, um, but also the reproducibility of those models, being able to 
create a, a perfect replica or as close to a perfect replica of a trained model to kind of build on that trust and the accuracy of the output. Um, not only will these working on these two issues increase the accuracy, but as I said, it's, it's also about building trust, especially as some of these trained models get implemented in the real world. Um, another key area that, that we're, we're following very closely is data bias um, and how to address data bias, how to mitigate it, how to incorporate the, the fact that it's there. Um, how do you understand how data bias can impact the results of a model? Um, in many cases, AI experts are saying that data quality and data diversity is inadequate uh, for, their, for their training right now. Um, and this can lead, in some cases, to, to some data bias, especially if you're collecting information from a very specific uh, experiment or test group. Uh, another interesting concept that started to gain some traction is the environmental impact of artificial intelligence. Uh, there was a, a very fascinating article in Nature last year that talked about the cost of training large AI, in this case, natural language processing models, um, the impact of that on the environment. Uh, and it's not something that you know, is is talked about as much as as other aspects or concerns of AI, but thinking about the cost of AI in a carbon dioxide emission or you know the power input, many of these models require massive amounts of compute power and and a lot of energy needs to go into that. And one of the possible solutions that's been uh, developing is more power efficiency on the processor and accelerator side. Um, there are some companies that are working to make their product, their processor or accelerator, as power efficient as possible, recognizing the scale of training, the scale of the models required for what we want to accomplish, and the energy cost that comes with that. As we look at kind of the future, the next kind of year of research in the AI space, we're looking at a couple of things. Um, one is understanding how system design is going to evolve as users take more advantage of AI, incorporate it into their daily workflow? Um, how are users going to look at processors and accelerator decisions? Um, what does this mean for the storage and the memory technologies involved? And also the, the interconnect schemes for a heterogeneous system design. We're also thinking about the application side and how are the changes in data privacy and data sharing laws going to impact the way in which the community can get access to more data, can share data. Um, and then also, how are users and how are researchers addressing the transparency issues? Um, how are they addressing the fact that deep learning does hold more power, but you also, it also can be more of a black box than, than other models. Um, and we're also looking at how AI methodologies and traditional HPC modeling and simulation applications are starting to come together, whether it's AI being applied to parts of the HPC mod sim application or HPC simulation being used to generate synthetic data sets for AI training. Um, it's a two-way road and we're eager to, un to understand and see where this intersection goes. If you have any questions or any comments, um, please feel free to email us. Um, thank you very much.